Hey, so as you can guess by the title or by the video playing in the background, today we will create a cartoony spider sense effect, entirely in Blender, procedural in the shader graph. So if you have your own animation, your own model that you would like to apply this spider sense into, then you're more than welcome to do so. I think we should cover everything that you will need to translate this into your own scene. We will not focus on importing the model and the animation from Mixamo because I did it in my previous videos. You're welcome to check that out. Feel free to browse through my channel. But today we will rather focus on the effect itself, the weekly lines and also maybe the action lines if we have enough time. But those are quite simple, so I'm sure you don't have problem with that. Also a big shout out to a Twitter user under the nickname Celestial Mace, whose help was basically essential uh, in this effect. So thank you and uh, you can check out his work. I will put a link in the description. Highly recommend check it out because there is a lot of amazing stuff in there, uh, especially if you're into a shader editor in Blender, then that's definitely something for you. And now let's jump right into new Blender scene. In here you can delete everything and all we need is gonna be a mesh plane because that's where the effect is gonna be. And also let's drag in another viewport which we will set to shader editor and create new material, let's call it spider sense. And also make sure that the render engine that you're using is EV, not cycles, so that we avoid any problems. Now we can switch this to a rendered view and delete the principal BSDF as we don't need it. So let's start with a texture coordinates node. And let's start by adding a vector math node. Let's change it from add to length and connect the texture coordinate object into the vector math node which will give us this nice black to white gradient. Now we will need a math node, actually two of them. The first one let's set to multiply and the second one to cosine. Now as we increase the multiply value, we should have those rings appear in our plane. We can move this a little bit higher to make some space because there's gonna be quite a bit of nodes. Hope that's not gonna be too confusing, but if you have any questions, then comment section is for you. I'll try to answer as much as possible, but I also know that people uh, usually are very helpful and uh, they just help each other in comments under my video. So if you need any help, that's, that would be the good place to ask for it. Now, because this contrast is a little bit too strong, uh, we need another math node. And this time we will change it to multiply add. So we will multiply it by half, which basically divides it. And then we add one so that it evens uh, the values out a little bit, lowers the contrast. And after that, we will need another math node. This time it's gonna be a divide. And we divide it by a hundred. So the values are much, much lower. Now let's go back to our texture coordinates and add a gradient texture node. And also let's use the object input. And in the gradient texture, let's change it from linear to radial. And now we want this one to go on top of the result from the divide. So let's add another math node, change it to add and take the gradient texture radial connected right here. And you should have something like this. And right now, as you can see, we have the base for a single wiggle line. But of course, we want to control how many of them will appear. So let's do it right away. We could just copy over a math node and change it to modulo. And then with this value being below one, we could add another lines like this but this is very unclear as to what the number is and how many of the wiggle lines you actually have on the screen. So we will use another method. And for that, we will need a value node, then math node set to multiply and also another one set to divide. Now this value is gonna be the amount of wiggle lines that we will have on our screen. So let's set it to 10 at first and connect this value node to multiply. The second value of multiply is two. And then this multiply goes into the second input of the divide. This is very important. And the first input is one. It's very important that the one is on the top because the division is not interchangeable like multiplication, for example. So just make sure that you have it right. And then we need another math node, but this time we set it to ping pong. And the result of the divide node goes into the scale. And here our base for the wiggle line goes into the value. Now, if we preview ping pong, you can see that with this value of 10, we, can, we have exactly 10 of those wiggle lines. And as you change the number here, it's way more intuitive in terms of what you're doing and what's actually appearing on the screen. All right, so the first problem is solved. We can move this a little bit here so that we have more space because more nodes are coming. 
Now we add another math node, this time set to multiply, and let's choose a value of 10, just so that we have a little bit more contrast between the white and the black areas. But more importantly, make sure that you select clamp here, so that the values here don't exceed 1 and 0. And now next one is gonna be a compare node, where the value is gonna be set to 1, and now the epsilon controls how thick the wiggle lines will be. So here we control thickness, and here we control the number of the lines. So if you set it to, for example, 15, then you see that everything disappeared, and that's because you have to control the epsilon, because there was apparently way too much space between the black values, so that the white disappeared completely. Hope that makes sense. So those two things are for you to adjust for yourself, and that is basically the hardest part of the whole graph. So congratulations if you made it this far. Now we will go ahead and make sure that we mask the areas where the wiggle lines will be visible, so that we have a nice transition between a visible and not visible, instead of those harsh uh, cutout lines. So I think now is a good time where we add a mix shader node, a transparent node, and also a emission node. Now connected like so, the transparent goes on top and the emission on the bottom, and then the factor is the result of our compare node. And now as we preview the mix shader, make sure that in the shader tab you have a blend mode set to alpha blend or alpha clip, and now you should see the transparency where the black areas were. So now let's cut out those wiggle lines in the middle, because as you recall uh, this effect is supposed to happen around the head of the object. So we don't want them to go into the mesh. So let's create a sphere just to visualize it a bit better and then make it a bit smaller. So let's imagine that this is the head. Uh, we want those wiggle lines to end about here so that they are not attached to the head itself. So for that we will need a little bit of masking. Going back to the texture coordinates, let's create another gradient texture node. And this time from linear, let's change it to spherical and add another math node right after it and connect it again from the texture coordinates object. Now let's add another math node and set it to power. Now as we connect this like so, you can see that we have this sphere and as we increase it gets much softer but also smaller. And that's exactly what we need, just make sure that you clamp it so again we don't exceed the values between 0 and 1 and then copy it over, change the power to multiply and here let's go with 10. Uh, yes, it's the value that I checked beforehand, just so you don't have to, but feel free to experiment with your own. And now you can see that we still have the softness, but we have more white uh, in the center. And now one more math node above everything, and we will connect it straight from gradient texture, which is gonna give us the spherical gradient, but with more contrast, with less soft uh, gradient. And now the next thing is last math node where we change it to subtract. And now we just subtract this middle part, which is going to the bottom of the subtract node, from this big sphere which goes to the top. And as you preview this, you should have this sort of donut looking shape. Now in order, con now in order to control how far away from the head object this wiggle starts, simply change the value of multiply or power depending if you're trying to uh, just cut out the shape earlier or later or just change the gradient. And now this result we just have to multiply with everything that we have in here. So again, another math node set to multiply and compare goes to one slot and our mask goes into another. And then this result is our factor for the mix shader. As you can see we have a nice cutout of the wiggle lines. And here we can come back to the shader tab. As I mentioned before the blend mode is supposed to be set to either alpha clip or alpha blend. As you can see the alpha blend gives you this nice gradient where it goes from white to transparent. And the alpha clip basically clips the value harshly so you have the 0 to 1 transition. So the choice is yours, it's more of a art style choice, whatever you prefer. I'm just letting you know it's there. Alright, so as this is the head and this is our spider sense lines, we can imagine that there's gonna be a neck somewhere here and then shoulders. Yeah, I'm terrible at drawing, I know. But my point is we don't want those lines to cut into the mesh. We basically want to have a control over how much of those lines, starting like this, 
is gonna be visible versus invisible. So in order to do that, we will need just a few more math nodes, but don't worry, this is gonna be the last clump of nodes. So let's move this masking a little bit here. And now the first node that we will need is a mapping node, actually two of them, so we can copy it over. And then again, texture coordinates object go into the mapping input vector, both of them. And now we will need another gradient texture, so we can just copy it over, set again to radial. Let's connect it like so. And let's preview this. So we have this nice radial gradient, copy it over again, and here connect it again. But this time we will also put a vector math node in between, set to multiply, and we will multiply this vector by minus one so that the radial is on the bottom. So we have one on top and one on the bottom. Now we will need a math node. And in order to combine those two, we will need to add them. So let's just add those two together. And you can see that the result is like so, but we want those darker parts to be on the same side because we would like to open them like so. So that uh, they open at the same rate from both sides. So in order to achieve that, we will need a invert node right here in this top gradient node. Now, as you can see, we have white on one side and then black on the other side. Let's move those down a little bit. And then one last math node, set it to less than, and let's put the threshold to one and also select clamp, just so we know we have the black and white values, which is gonna mask our, our wiggles around the head. Now, in order to make them open and close, we have to go back to our mapping node. And now you can see that as we change the angle of the Z rotation, those two basically open and close as we want. So now in order to just have a one value to control both of them, just for the easier uh, use of that, we will create a value node, then a combine X, Y, Z, because we only want to manipulate the Z value of this rotation. And then we can connect it to the upper mapping node and then also to the bottom one. But now you can see that the problem uh, arises that when we move this value node, then they both turn clockwise and we want one to go clockwise and the other one counterclockwise so they can meet in the center at some point. So for that, we will need another math node, well, vector math node. We can just copy over this multiply because that's exactly what we need is multiply it by minus one. And so now when you change the value, you can see that the masking works exactly as we would want it to work basically. And well, if you actually animate this, I think it makes for a quite nice loop animation. But anyway, um, you could see that when we drew the our guy here, uh, we drew him like this. And now our mask is uh, masking out the sides instead of the ups and down as we would probably want it to, to mask because we want to mask the neck and the body. So there is a couple ways to achieve that, but I think the easiest and the most um, clear way of how to do it is just simply take all this group of nodes that you have, move them a little bit more down in here, and then the connection between the texture coordinates that goes into those two mapping nodes, we'll just input another mapping node in between that that we will change by 90 degrees on the z-axis. So basically we're taking whatever is in here and we just flip it by 90 degrees. And so now when you change this value, you can see that our masking is exactly as we intend it to be. So now as you remember, white is visible and black is invisible. So we can set it to something like maybe this. And then the result of this node group is gonna again be multiplied by the last math node that we have that goes into the factor. So again, let's duplicate this math node. And then the second input of this multiply is gonna be this. And then as we preview the mix shader, you can see that we have this nice cutout of our wiggle lines. But the problem you may see is that right here, uh, I have this wiggle line to hole, and this one is cut in the middle. And that is because the number in here is now an odd number and it has to be an even number so that it cuts evenly and you can have the symmetric uh, number of wiggle lines in here. It's not perfect, but it works. So just have to set it something like this. And now for the last part, let's go into the customization of this all because for now we just have some wiggle lines in here, but 
We don't really have control over the amount of wiggle that they have and also they all look the same. So first thing, uh, right after this length, this multiply, the second value of this multiply controls how many wiggles do those lines have, how many uh, curves. So in a, when you increase it, you have a bit more tighter uh, effect. And when you decrease it, you can go to a straight line. So I will keep it something like this. And then in order to make it more noisy and less regular, all we have to do is add a noise texture. So we put it right here and then we will also need a color mix. I actually noticed that in the older versions of Blender, it was called Mix RGB. Now it's called a Mix Color, so don't be confused. And the noise texture input color goes into the second input of this Mix Color node, not the first one, also very important. And then the texture coordinate object goes into the A input of this Mix Color. Now set the mix to linear light and then this output goes into the length instead of pure texture coordinate. And what that will do is it will take these coordinates, then distort it through this noise texture. And so as you change the parameters of this noise texture, such as scale or details, you see that you have a different result over here. And that's basically it. Uh, the last thing that you may want to change that you could see in uh, my video is if you go with the low number of the wiggle lines, then you can see, especially when they are thick, that this top and bottom part, they don't really end very nicely, like they end in a harsh cut. And that is because, as you remember, we created this mask that uh, was preventing of the lines going into the head and we connected it right here after all the wiggle has already been done, basically. And so it's cutting already done wiggle, let's say, let's call it this way. I mean, my English is shitty, so you have to bear with me. But in order to change that, uh, what we can do is we can move this multiply and instead of putting it here, we can put it right after the ping pong note, which is basically where the magic happens, where we are setting up how many of those uh, wiggle lines we'll have. So we can just cut those lines and then put it right here, connect it to ping pong, and then this ping pong goes into the multiply, like so. And then the compare goes into this multiply that is applying this uh, cutout mask for the shoulders. And now as you preview this, you should have much softer and much more round ends to, to the wiggles. Again, with the epsilon, you control like how thick they are, but now they are more well-rounded, I would say, not as harsh. But again, this is a entirely stylistic choice for you. You can also further control this uh, in here, where we have this donut shape. You could just set the value of this multiply lower or higher. So I'll leave it at something like eight, because I just like the round shape of it. And I'll also maybe increase the exponent here, so they go a little bit closer to the head, but hey, feel free to do whatever you want. And I hope it wasn't too confusing. Uh, that would be basically it. Now you can, of course, just, you know, like put colors in there or something. You can even go in here right after uh, this multiply and maybe connect a color ramp so you have more than one color of these wiggle lines. But I will leave that up to you. Uh, feel free to experiment with this. Uh, put it in your scene, make it work for you and if you do so, tag me on Twitter. I would love to see your work. And that would be it for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it may not be as nice as the previous ones. Uh, I had a long break, so I hope it wasn't too bad though. Anyway, I'm just rambling. Point is, enjoy. Uh, let me know in the comments what was not clear. Uh, if you have some questions, you can either contact me under this video or text me on Twitter. Uh, link for that are in the description. And with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.